السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ڈیل آنرس ویلکم ٹو مائی کلاس آئی ڈو ایکسپیکٹ دیٹ اللہ ہیز کیپ آل آف یو ہیل اینڈ ہارٹی الحمد للہ آئی ایم کوائٹ اوکے بائی ہیز گریس ٹوڈے آئی ایڈ لائک ٹو شیئر وتھ یو about some important things the similarity or the contribution of English literature in English language actually literature is totally related or interconnected to language There are so many rules, systems, which we have got from literature. Most of the novelists, poets, quoted or used some rules or sentences in their stories or short stories which have come to our grammar or language. So we can say that literature, a language, can never be fulfilled without literature. In fact, during our time, when we were the students of SSC and HSC, we had got the touch of literature. We read so many stories in class 9 and in class 10 in our textbooks. And we also got the touch of literature in our HSC syllabus. During our time, when we read English textbooks, we had five stories, short stories in our textbooks. The names of the story were The Ancient Mariner, which was written by S.T. College, that means Samuel Taylor College. The second was Luncheon, The Luncheon, which was written by William Somerset Mom. The third was A Mother in Man Bill, which was written by Marjorie Kenan Rollins. The fourth is Reading for Pleasure, which was written by L. A. G. Strong, that means Leonard Alfred George Strong, and The Gift of the Magi, which was written by O. Henry. O. O is a pseudonym, that means Nam de Plum. The full form of O is William Sidney Potter. So in business questions, the students may face this question. What is the full form of O? The full form of O is William Sidney Potter. And ST means Samuel Taylor. And LAG, the full form of LAG is Leonard Alfred George. So, in the ancient mariner, the lines, the important lines of the story were like this. The marriage ceremony was over and the guests were all going to the feast. The old graybeard, the sailor sat in stone outside the church and watched the people walking past him. He had a strange mad look in his eyes. Suddenly, he stopped one of the guests. There was a she, the old seller began. One day, the old seller killed the albatross. And we also got the line from the story. The colors were so beautiful. 
that I had shown a great love for them. So it was told about the water snakes. When the old sailor, when the ancient mariner saw the water snakes, he felt great love for them. And we also got the line, at last God took pity on him. It's the phrase, take pity on, that means to be kind. So the main theme of this story is, he prayed based, who loveth based, all things, both great and small, for the dear God who loveth us, he made and laughed all. He prayed based, who loveth best. All things, both great and small, for the dear God who loved us, he made and loved all. That means, Allah loves those people who love all living beings, all the creatures of the world. To be kind to animal is to be kind to mankind. So, from this story, we got this important line. He prayed best, who loved best. And uh, you know that uh, the luncheon, it was a, a funny story which was written by William Summers' mom. In the previous uh, two or three years ago, we got the story in the textbook, The Luncheon. It was written by William Summers' mom. So he described about his uh, own feelings in this story. So it started with, I caught sight of her at the play and in answer to her beckoning, I went off during the interval and sat down beside her. So we have got also, uh, in cha we, we change in, in changing the sentence, how time does fly, how time does fly. So William Somerset mom used this sentence in his stories. And when we emphasize to a sentence, we may use do or does or did before the main verb. Like how time does fly. So we change in assertive from exclamatory in assertive when we change, we change it in time flies very fast. When we would like to make it assertive into assertive, it will be time flies very fast or time does fly very fast. So William Somerset mom used this sentence in his story. And we got many uh, phrasal words from this story. Keep body and soul together. 20 years ago I was living in Paris. And the lady guest used the same sentence or same words, same speeches. I never eat more than one thing for luncheon. So, another phrase is the bill of fare. Cast sight of. So, meet somebody suddenly or all, all on a sudden. The meaning of the phrase is cast sight of. Meet, to see, meet somebody all at once. And uh, the lady guest took Many items of foods like shamon, asparagus, asparagus, peas, coffee, ice cream, champagne. But the writer chose the cheapest dish on the menu that was the mutton chop. So take to task. When the mutton chop arrived, she seriously took me to task. Take to task means insult somebody, to insult somebody. Take to task. We got this phrase from this story. And the writer also used this sentence, I have had my revenge at last. And in modern Manville, the writer was Marjorie Kenan Rawlings. Marjorie Kenan Rawlings had expressed her own feelings about in this story. A boy named Jerry, who, was, uh, who had possessed many extraordinary qualities or uh, who had many qualities which impressed the authoress. 
So the authorities lived uh, uh, in a cabin and it belonged to the orphanage. So Jerry started living at the orphanage since he was four. And about his quality, uh, Marjorie Kenan Rawlings described that it is embedded on courage, but it is more than brave. It's honest, but it's more than honesty. So Jerry was careful, thoughtful, grateful, sincere, punctual. So these qualities, the authors could see in his character. A very little boy, but he, he had many qualities. So the story was about uh, the quality of a, uh, an orphan. Uh, his name was Jerry. And uh, another is, you know, that Reading for Pleasure, which was written by L.S.G. Strong, Leonard Alfred George Strong. To my mind, the first uh, uh, common sentences of this story was that, to my mind, the only sensible reason for reading anything is because to enjoy it or hope to enjoy it. Of course, pleasure covers a whole bag of feelings and shades of feeling, but it's my strongest belief about reading that one should read only what one likes and because one likes it. He has also said that a book is like a living person. A book is like a living person. So when, he, when the writer was a young boy, he wanted to read many books, adventurous books. When his parents forbade him to read the other books, so the writer also expressed that the forbidden book, this forbidden book, lasted longer than all the rest because it was forbidden. So when the writer uh, was not allowed to read the books, so these books were read by the writer several times with uh, rapt attention. So the writer said that one should read only what one likes and because one likes it. And uh, you know that uh, another story was a very uh, common story which is known to all the love between husband and wife. The name was G. Mandela. The name of the story is the, the Gift of the Magi. The Gift of the Magi. It was written by O. Henry. So you have already come to know that the full form of O is William Sidney Porter. O is a pseudonym or nom de plum of William Sidney Porter. And uh, we, we used to read five stories and we used to read ten poems. The Patriot, which was written by Robert Browning, Patriotism, which was written by Sir Walter Scott, For the Fallen, which was written by Lawrence Binion, Tree at My Window, which was written by Robert Frost, Time You Old Gypsy Man, which was written by Ralph Hudson, The Passionate Shepherd to His Love, which was written by Christopher Marlowe, under the Green Tree, which was written by William Shakespeare. The Solitary Reaper, which was written by William Orsworth. To Daffodils, which was written by Robert Herrick. Justice, which was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. So in, in first paper, we used to write from the five stories, we used to write broad questions, short questions, explanations from the poems in second paper. So these were very interesting stories. So I, I, I have memorized some important lines from uh, Tiny Old Gypsy Man. Tiny Old Gypsy Man, will you not stay, put off your caravan just for one day? All things I will give you, will you be my guest? Bells for your Janet of Silver the Best. Goldsmith shall beat you a great golden ring. Little boys will bow to you and a little girls will sing. And sweet girls will pass on you with me. Time you will gypsy you why has away. way. Last week in Babylon, last in night in Rome. Morning and in the crash under false dome, under false dial you touch in rain. 
up to some city. Now blind in the oop, up to here and that in the tomb. Time will give the man. Will you not stay? Put up your caravan just for one day. This is a poem. The name of the poem was Time will give the man. It was written by Ralph Hudson. Tree at my window, window tree, my sash is lowered when that comes on, but let there never be cut and drawn between you and me. So these were very interesting and uh, instructive poems which you read. And we have got so many, uh, so many uh, phrases from these stories, five stories, poems, like the rule. The rule of fancy we have got from the luncheon. William Somerset mom has used, I fancy I turned a trifle pale. The rule of fancy we have got from this story. Like if we get fancy, after that if we get subject, then the verb will be in past form. I fancy I turned a trifle pale. Like I fancy I visited Makkah. I fancy I visited Medina. So if we get fancy, Fancy means imagine. After that, if we get subject, then verb will be in past form. And in reading for pleasure, we have got some people take a good book as if it were a medicine. Some people take a good book as if it were a medicine. If two clauses are connected to it as if and as though, if the first part is in present, the second will be in past. If the first part is in past, the second will be in past perfect. And from this story, we have got this rule. Some people take a good book, take is present as if it were a medicine. It were a medicine, that is the second part is in past. And another sentence is, you cannot take a good book as if it were a medicine. So, from our intermediate syllabus, we learned a lot. And we had grammar of 50 mar 52 marks. We had uh, transformations, narrations, passes narrations, transformations, uh, right from verse, translations, so many grammatical terms we had. And we had read properly. And when we started in honors, we know that uh, uh, we, we, we read uh, Elizabethan drama and romantic poetry, like we had read the poems of P.B. Shelley. The full form of PBE is Percy Bishi Shelley. Percy Bishi Shelley. So uh, from his poems, Ode to Skylark and Ode to the West Wind. From Ode to the West Wind, we get the line, the sentence like, If winter comes, can a spring be far behind? This sentence has been taken, or this line has been taken from Ode to the West Wind. That means it, it shows us that after sorrows, joy comes to us. Happiness and sorrow come by turns. Joy and sorrow come by turns. Will and will come by turns. So if winter comes, can a spring be far behind? So P.B. Shelley has told this in the poem, Ode to the West Wind. In another poem, Ode to Skalark, it's a poem of 105 lines. I memorized it, but I cannot remember right now. But uh, the last 10 sentences uh, are like that. We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest stars. Taste me how the gladness that the brain must know. Such harmonious madness from my lips would flow. The world should listen then as I'm listening now. Hail to thee, the first five lines, hail to thee, bleed the speed, but thou never wet, put us the full hearts in, pro in propitiousness of unpremediated urge. So the most important line or sentence of this poem is, our sweetest songs are those that say tell of saddest thoughts. That means, so man always remembers the past story, which is full of sorrows and sufferings. Our sweetest songs are those, the tale of saddest stories. 
most of the sad songs are popular to all of us. Sad moments. We can remember easily about our sad moments. We look before and after and find for what is not our sincere laughter with some pen is proud. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of sad thoughts. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of sad thoughts. So Pastor Shelley told this. And you know that John Keats, he wrote some interesting or important poems like Ode to Autumn, Ode on Melancholy, Ode on Aggression Urn, Ode to Nightingale. So he said that man is the worshipper of beauty. Beauty is truth, truth is beauty. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. This is a very important line of John Keats. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Beauty is truth, truth is beauty. So in completing sentence, we may get this. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thoughts. If winter comes, can it spring me far behind? And beauty is truth, truth is beauty. In most of the books, at the end of the books, uh, in the cover page, uh, it has been written, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. It has been said or it has been quoted by John Keats. And we have also read about the poems of William Orsworth. William Orsworth is one of the greatest romantic poets in English literature. His poem is Tintern Abbey. It's an autobiography of it's an autobiography of William Orsworth. Five years have passed, five summers with the length of five long winters. These beauteous forms through a long absence have not been to me as is the landscape to a blind man's eye. And he has also written some sonnets like to Milton. The world is too much with us. It's a beauteous evening come and free. The world is too much with us. Late and soon getting and spending. We live with our powers. Little we see nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a solid boon. The sea that bears our bosom to the moon. The winds that will be hauling at all hours. It's a beauteous evening come and free. So, this train turn away to Milton. To Milton, it's a beauteous evening come and free. And the world is too much with us. These are sonnets. And train turn away is a very interesting poem of William Orsworth. He's called the father of sonnets in English literature. He was born in 1770. He, he breached his last in 1850. At the end of the, our textbook, we also read uh, about uh, uh, the despoirs. And uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, William Swords, P.P. Shelley, John Keats, we have read about them. In Romantic, we had read about their story, about their poems. They are called as Romantic poets. And in our second year, we have read about metaphysical poetry. Andrew Marvel, John Donne, George Harvard, Henry Vaughan, the definition of love, young love. Huh? Therefore, the love which keeps us not bind, but fades so inversely reverse, is the conjunction of the mind and opposition of the stars. The sun rising, very interesting poem, young love. Valediction forbidden morning. Hmm? So, ecstasy. So, uh, we have read uh, many and we have got the touch of literature, pure literature during our time. So, but the students of new generations, like these generations, they're not getting touch of anything and they're lagging behind. They don't learn grammar properly. They don't, they didn't get the touch of literature. And they have no interest to read this. So in Two Daffodils, Robert Herrick has got the similarity. The lifespan of human being and the short stay of daffodils, the similarity between the four deals and the lifespan of human beings. It's very short. Any time 
we may depart from this world like two daffodils uh, daffodil is a very beautiful flower but it fades away or it withers away very soon so under the green tree william shakespeare is welcoming the nature lovers so, so he has said that here shall he see no enemy but winter and rap whether come hither come hither come hither he's welcoming those people who love nature they can enjoy all the things here they can uh, take the fruits of the trees from the trees and but the main enemy is winter and rough weather so they have thought about this and uh, in, in, in the time you old gypsy man uh, time is very short time stays there where people use the best use of time who give its importance so these are really very instructive. We have read Macbeth as you like it. So we have got the life history of William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was born in 1564. On 23rd April, his father's name was John Shakespeare. He was born at Stratford on Avon in England. He had no academic qualification, but he could easily impress the readers through his writings. His famous writings are the Merchant of Venice, Romeo and Juliet, Julius Caesar, as you like it, Hamlet, Macbeth, Othello, King Lear, The Tempest, Major for Major. He was born in 1564. The 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's birth was celebrated all over the world in 1964. The 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's birth was celebrated all over the world in 1964. He breaked his last, he passed away on 23rd April, 1616, 1564, 1616. And we memorize this. We had the real touch of literature, which helped us to learn English properly. So, we can say that literature plays a very vital role in a language. So, a language can never be fulfilled without the help of literature. Language cannot be fulfilled without literature so in syllabus this should be properly included especially in english textbooks in bangla textbooks literature should be added poems stories short stories novels this should be included Okay, dear learners, I have described or narrated some important lines from poems, from stories. Please try to uh, get this and try to collect these books. You can learn a lot from these books. In admission test, you may also face these questions. Who wrote this? Who wrote the gift of the Magi, O Henry, who wrote Otus Eskyler, P.B. Shelley, who wrote Ode on a Gratian Arn, Ode to Autumn, Ode to Nightingale, John Keats. So, who wrote The Lunch of William Somerset Mom? From literature, you may face questions. So that's why you have to give importance about the life history of a great poet or dramatist or novelist. You will come to know about his famous writings, date of birth, birth year, death year, which help us to uh, show our creativity, to increase our knowledge. These are part and parcel of language. So we cannot do without the help of literature in a language and we have to give importance okay dear learners thanks a lot for hearing me for listening to my words attentively you will pray for me and you will stay connected with me inshallah i'll try to give you more informations from different sources. 
and you can get something from these classes from these lectures inshallah and we learn english properly english plays a very important role in our life we cannot do without english it's the most important language it is a valuable language precious language which is used all over the world is a common language so please learn english properly we learn the four skills of english speaking writing listening writing reading just speaking won't give you everything so that's why we will try to master four skills inshallah we learn english properly may allah keep us safe and sound may allah help us to learn english properly that's all for today's class inshallah we'll meet again assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh